Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve Podcast. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me is Will Doherty. This is me. Are you trying to figure out which your head, your head, you're number two. I'm number two. Okay. I'm, I'm three. <laughs> I was uh, fudging with the headphones because it's a little too loud. I have very delicate ears, Jimmy. Enough out of you. We're also joined by Joshua Vossler. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey. Uh, very exciting show we've got for you today. We are going to be joined shortly by our good friend and local comedian, Joey Zimmerman. Uh, Yay! Wi- Yay! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, Will Doherty is going to do another Slop 40 segment where he makes fun of the terrible lyrics in pop music. Uh, we might even get to a little... Little, a little, a little political. <laughs> I just came up with a new segment name, guys. <laughs> a little political talk. Uh, the midterm elections were held today. So we'll see how much time we have and we'll get into what we can. So thank you very much, everybody who's been listening. We really appreciate all the downloads and all the listens. We've uh, had a lot of people coming up to us telling us how much they like the show. So we really appreciate it. Send us a tweet at the Jimmy Curve. Uh, an email at the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com. You can download all of our episodes by going to www.thejimmycurve.com. Like us on Facebook. Uh, Google us and hope you hit us. Uh, <laughs> go outside your house and yell, hello, the Jimmy Curve. Maybe we'll hear you. Uh, ask Jeeves it. Ask Jeeves. Bing it. Lycos. Send us a carrier pigeon. Uh, maybe that'll get to us, or a homing pigeon. I don't know how you communicate. Uh, smoke signals? Josh, you can read smoke signals, right? Yes. All right, so... Put a bumper sticker on your car that says the Jimmy Curve, but made out of religious iconography for some reason? (laughs) That would be fantastic. Make your own (laughs) t-shirts? Oh, I've done that. They should be here any day. Uh, but they are cheaply made. I... I spent, oh, you got T-shirts? No, I just got one oh. because well, I ordered. I I ordered the one gi- T-shirt. I ordered the I ordered the Jimmy Curve business cards and from uh, Vistaprint. And when you order business cards from Vistaprint, it says it tries to upsell you afterwards, and it's like here's another twenty five things that you can slap a logo onto. So I got one the Jimmy Curve coffee mug, mm. and. It said for three dollars you can get a the Jimmy Curve T shirt, and I was like, "That is going to be a terrible T shirt," but I got one anyway because it <laughs> might not be. Who knows? I am guessing that that is just going to be like it, it's just going to be like a bed sheet that was cut into a T shirt shape. I mean, three dollars is not a lot. The thing is, is it's only three dollars, but they want you to buy shirts, so it'd probably be a decent shirt. Oh, we'll see. I, I was, if there was a Jimmy Curve toga, I'd have bought that. They didn't have it, so. Oh, my God. Can you check out the thread count on this T-shirt? It's amazing. (laughs) Well, might be a good plug coming for Vistaprint soon. We'll see. Uh, In the meantime, thank you to everybody who listens. Thank you to our... We had four downloads from the United Kingdom on the last episode, which was great. And six from Minnesota, or as I call it, Corey Brewer country, apparently. So I have some friends in Minnesota. Do you? Yeah. Perhaps they pre-downloaded in anticipation of the big Joey Zimmerman episode. (laughs) This is it. (laughs) Living the dream. (laughs) Buckle up, Minnesota. You're in for a ride. About to get bumpy. (laughs) Uh, Get that drop. Now, uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, This... Thursday, which is when this episode is going to drop, you can catch uh, Will Doherty on the Doom Room. Where that's at uh, Brothers Lounge. That is correct in Omaha, Nebraska. So go to Brothers Lounge, check out the Doom Room. It's basically improvised stand up, uh, and we're going to get the hosts of the Doom Room, Dan Schmidt and Chris Dryden, on a future episode of the Jimmy Curve. Hopefully, so go and check out that show. It's your plug. Nailed it. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get on with everything. Uh, Joey Zimmerman joins us today. Hey, Joey, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, I'm doing okay. Doing pretty good. What's Life's going on? Good. Life's yeah. good. Life is good. Tell life wh- is good. Give Give me two specifically good things going on in your life right now. <laughs> wow, two specific things. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I am breathing. Not That's specific awesome. enough. <laughs> <laughs> I am breathing and I am white. <laughs> Whoa! No, my, I'm I'm really white. Uh, Ryan Dowd agrees with you. <laughs> Ghost of Ryan Dowd. No, life's good. Life's good. I'm about to finish school. Comedy's been fun. 
Things are happening. The one thing that I always identify you with, Joey, is just a generally positive energy. That's good. That's good. And and so I'm I'm hoping that your presence on this show will counterbalance the generally negative energy, <laughs> like almost a black hole of happiness that exists somewhere in the middle of the three of the hosts. So a couple times when I'll I've stick hosted. a little little flower on the dead grass. <laughs> that's, what that's what I will be. I will be your wallflower. I love it. A couple times I've hosted, and uh, you were on the show, and uh, I always I always uh, introduce you as uh, give him a big namaste, <laughs> Joey, Joey Zimmerman. Right. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Is that do Do you have to like ever? Do you ever have to convince yourself to just no nah, man like feel good today or is it yeah, just natural? Yeah, that's hey man, I go, I go through some poopy times just like <laughs> everybody else. <laughs> and then you look in the mirror and you but remember, oh it, right, I'm young and good looking, and, and there's weed. <laughs> and there's, there's always plenty of weed. Yeah, well, uh, I guess that helps. I see. I can't. I. Here's the thing, like we can talk about this. I can't smoke weed because it makes me sick. Like oh. it just makes me nauseous and sick to my stomach. I have a and I hate like it. Allerg- he's like allergic to it. Like it just makes him like sick, and he's like bedridden after he smokes it every time. Yeah, that it sucks. I, I mean, like different. I feel I feel nauseous for like two days, but every chemical affects people differently. Yeah, mm-hmm. that so, is well, true. I, but like everybody I know who like smokes weed and then just feels good, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, now you're actively rubbing good. it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's, there's the positive energy just right in my face. That's good. Uh, Joey, you uh, have hosted a uh, a monthly stand-up showcase uh, called the Taco Bout It comedy show. Taco. Yeah. Bout It. <laughs> Taco. <laughs> Uh, and it, it's been uh, once a month down at Knickerbockers. It, it's been a pretty good show. Uh, but you have an announcement to make. Yeah, I've been I've been doing that show for about a year or so, and after a while of just doing it, it's just uh, Knickerbockers is just a not that many people come down to that place. I'm I, I'm I'm now I'm no longer hosting the Taco Bout at Comedy Show. Is there going to be it, a show? It can be up for grabs if you want to. If any, anyway, this goes out to anyone who wants to contact Knickerbockers <laughs> and start a comedy show there. Like, not a, not like a bash on them or anything. It's just uh, I had friends come down there, but you know, after a while, it's like all your friends can't come to all your shows, yeah. and then after like the first special first couple of them start being so special then it's like turns into just a monthly thing and people only make it if it's convenient and then it comes it's hard to get people to comedy showcases in lincoln that's true like it's just hard i mean i well the thing about comedy it's not like music like music if there's a band that you like you can go see them all the time it's still super fun or if there's a sports team that you like you can go to every game but like once you've seen a comedian perform like as if it's your friend. Like once you've seen your friend do stand up comedy, it's not going to be as great the yeah. fifth time you've seen him. That's why I, I always try to. Whenever I know I'm like some friends are coming, I always try to think of new things. And it's like I always try to make it be like, right? All right what the hell haven't they heard yet or something? Yeah. Try to give them like some type of fresh experience. That's kind of too bad, man. I really like that show. That was yeah, was the the thirty five cent tacos were the highlight of the show. Well, you, you know what? That's <laughs> uh, it's like my grandpappy always said: nothing goes together like tacos and comedy. So does that mean the tacos are gone too? No, the tacos are still there. Oh, thank God! It's just not comedy. <laughs> it's the free jokes that were happening are no longer going to be provided. Well, they can be provided if. I mean, the taco is a pretty inherently hilarious food. Like, what's the funniest food? Like, a taco is a pretty fun. Well, anything that's been featured in a Weird Al Yankovic song. An right? oyster is pretty funny. You got to do a lot to it to to get it. Oysters are it. hysterical. <laughs> Um, anything, anything like phallic shape. In order to eat an oyster, you have to first shuck it, which yeah. is hysterical to me. <laughs> shuck it. Phallic shaped. Sure, any hot dog. Yeah, any banana. type of cucumber. You know, an oyster seems like the food that has the highest ratio of work to the like worst payoff. <laughs> yeah, there there are some nuts like that. <laughs> like, pist- like, is it pistachios? That pistachios are-, are pretty good. I like pistachios. Oh, they're delicious, but they're super hard to get into. Yeah, but they're delicious. Who are they keeping out of there, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're thinking of a Brazil nuts. No. Those are the hard ones to get Those into. Those are giant. Yeah, Pr- pistachios. Prison nuts. Pistachios aren't hard to get into. Prison, are- prison nuts. Prison. Okay, they're impossible yeah. to get Those out. are harder to get out of, actually. Oh, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> 
or harder to get into. <laughs> <laughs> Josh realized it across the day. We've taken a <laughs> southward turn here. Uh, I don't really want to. Well, all this positive energy has led us to puns, <laughs> and now we're here. <laughs> puns are good. Puns are good stuff. It just sucks. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> that was Brad. That was Brad. Uh, <laughs> Brad Stewart telling us what he thinks. That's the best voiceover of Brad. <laughs> It just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Telling us what he thinks of puns. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what do you have coming up, Joey? Like, what's what's next for Joey Zimmerman? Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, I am I am uh, attending the University of Lincoln, UNL, and I'm about to graduate in December. So all of like my creative energy and all my thoughts will like not be like shared with school and academia for like the first time in my life nice so yeah i'm excited it'll be like the first time of my life that i'm like not in school so i got i have a lot of stuff coming up me and uh metador productions we're working on some skit videos very cool that are gonna have coming out what is metador productions they're uh, some friends of mine in the lincoln area some local people who uh they do a lot of films for they do a lot of bur- like they they film some like EDM concerts at the Bourbon and stuff at like the Slowdown. Nice. So, but like they they've shown me a couple of, like still like scene by scene stuff that some people do, and it's like I know I know them. And they have cameras, and I have the ideas. That's that's my, two out of three. Two out of three <laughs> things we can do this thing. But yeah, I have uh, some like storyboards already written out and. All nice. like the scripts and stuff. So I'm just basically waiting. So when I'm done with school, so like. I have all this like extra attention to like kind of focus on like another project. Have you dabbled in sketch before? Um, I want to say it's no, not really. But like I've been a fan of like theater and stuff in high school, and I've always acted like characters, and like I was always quick witted awesome. and stuff like that. I I want to try uh, head up to like the Backland Improv Theater. Like I said, when I'm done with school, I have like more free time. I could like, every Wednesday go up there for the classes. That'd be yeah, fun. It- I've always people have said. I've they, been through all would, of them, so yeah. Are they fun? Do you it, love them. You get a lot out of it, I would say. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I think backline classes are kind of like anything, in that you'll you'll get out of it what you put, put into it. it. Mm-hmm. If you go in there open minded and really ready to like learn new things and give yourself over to the process, yeah, I'm all about that. Yeah, you I'm will come that. out of it with a lot. I mean, if you if you go in there just thinking I'm funny, I don't need these dickheads to tell me how to be funny then you won't you'll you'll be exactly the same when you leave oh that's what happened <laughs> <laughs> is that your experience <laughs> he's saying it's mine oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't I but i think we learned something about jimmy that's uh, funny. I, I i found it to be very valuable i i certainly enjoyed it i mean i i i would say you have a it, beer named after you over there don't you <laughs> uh no it, it's the j- it was just they're just fucking with me for a joke. I kept telling like oh, okay. I kept going up to the counter and asking for things they didn't have. <laughs> so, Blue and onion. So now they have a menu item that just says Jimmy's beers, and it's a bunch of stuff that they don't have. <laughs> so that's that's what they did. But um, Backline is a cool place to perform because yeah, it's, it's a really intimate, tight theater. Yeah, and there's no distractions. So, like people will pay attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and improv, like I do enjoy improv. I have a couple of improv teams that I'm on right now, and I perform there every once in a while. Um, but they also do a quarterly sketch show, which is sort of a Saturday Night Live style sketch show where you can write sketches and act them out. And like they always get you know good audiences for them, and the shows are always pretty great. So cool. yeah, uh, so go check out uh, Backline Improv Theater, everybody. It's your Plug. Nailed it again. Butt plug. <laughs> Butt plug. <laughs> yeah, check out the Backline Improv Theater. So anyways, yeah, it is something that will eat up a lot of time. Well, yeah, though, yeah like, so definitely. Th- so, you know. But that's cool. Uh, but yeah, I want to get into that. I want to get into, like, yeah, improv stuff. D- just different forms of comedy, really, other than stand-up. Yeah. I, 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 that's, I think that's a good thing to do is... A lot of people get mired down in only one thing, but the more different things you try, the better it'll make you at each thing, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And the more different things you do, like someone will see that and then they'll be like, oh, who's the, who does this? Oh, he's also does stand up comedy too. Well, let me check this out. Yep. It just gives people like a more, I don't know, well rounded idea of like all the creative things you can do and stuff. I, I absolutely agree. 
Positivity. <laughs> Positivity. <laughs> Bam. So uh, what else you got? Anything else coming up? Anything else you want to plug, talk about, mention? I'll be at Dugan's Pub on Saturday. There's a local uh, show. There's a good show happening down in yeah, Lincoln. Yeah, for, for Corey Brewer's exceptional extravaganza of uh, shows that I'm not on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Swim. what it's called, right? <laughs> that's what it is. That's why I believe that's what Come he called it. Come on down to Dugan's for the Fuck Jimmy show. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of people there. Fuck Jimmy. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Yeah. Your, your, your if you wanna, podcast has gained some notoriety. I will be I will be podcasting from outside the front door in protest of the show. <laughs> I'll be there, too. So, <laughs> so if you want to join Josh and I on the show, we'll be protesting Dugan's Pub Saturday night at 8 o'clock. I'll be on the show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you're on the show too. Cool, hell yeah. <laughs> no, that that'll be an awesome show. Uh, like I've uh, never been there before. I'm, um, a, I'm always I'm always interested. Always doing comedy in places I haven't been yet. Yeah, Dugan's Dugan's is very much like a like a towny bar. Like it's not it, it's not what you would. I mean, like it's a. Uh, no, you 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 flinched. Towny bar, you know, I, I, old school. I don't know. To it's not a word, college bar. I to mean, to me, the word towny means like. Upper middle class, like, like Dugan's is a dive. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess what I meant is it's not a college bar. Like, okay. it's, it's near a lot of college bars, and it is definitely not. No, <laughs> I don't even know where it's at. Where's it at? I'm pretty sure most of the people who are drinking there haven't finished high school. Eleventh and K. <laughs> 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 it's uh, you can laugh into the mic. That's what we <laughs> no, want. I, no, it was just funny. I thought you forgot, and then you just looked at me and said it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like an 11th and K or something like that, 11th and L. Uh, cool. It's I, I don't know. They have cheap drinks. They have, uh, they have cheap drinks and like it'll be, it's kind of, I think, I have, although I haven't done it because I haven't been invited to do it, but <laughs> like a comedy show would be cool there because the only thing I've done there is like open stage where it's mostly music and then they give a chunk for comics, whoever come. Yeah. And that's pretty hit or miss because mm. you're usually performing in a lot of, in front of a lot of musicians that have heard you before or other comics. Um, but, like, it was weird. Last Wednesday, all three of us did pretty good. Kids, it was, I had this, a good is, time. Is there a good crowd? Is there, like, a good, like, uh, some reg, some reg, regulars? Not for the open stage. Not for the uh, open stage. The, you know, I've always been well-received there. I've never been, like, for the most it's, part, the people, the regulars there, they welcome comedy. It's kind of hard. I mean, it's a big place. Like, it's way bigger than Duffy's. Uh, in, on the inside, it feels like that to me. So if there's if there's fifteen people there, it it feels kind of empty. But that doesn't mean that there's not people there. Um, but yeah, last yeah, it's it's it, it is kind of fun to go up there and screw around sometimes. It's like, like one of those places where like you tell a new joke and you hear one person laugh and you're just like fucking nailed it. <laughs> 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 uh, All right, I, now I totally thank you. Now I know what to expect. Going if you if you've never seen for those listeners who've never seen Joey perform comedy, he's super adorable. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> That's Joey, how I always want my <laughs> Joey walks up on Joey describe. walks up on stage and smiles and you want to love him. <laughs> I always try to do like a slow clap to try to get people <laughs> yeah, into it. Right. As opposed, like I like to open my sets by just attacking the audience with my voice. It's not as effective as your let method. Let me see your butt. <laughs> that, yeah, let me see. Let me see your butt is very popular. Can I cover? Let me see your butt. Uh, you may give me credit after you do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna cover it. I'm not gonna not give you credit. I, I, I wouldn't. I'm not, I'm not gonna take I'm your totally opening gonna bit. Do it. The thing is, Joey would, gets away with that. You wouldn't. No. You look like a guy who said who if they if you said that you'd creep. People no, the out. bar would give me a restraining order. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do. Let me see your butt. People are like this fucking guy. <laughs> to the to the listeners who don't know, I I uh, clap my hands in a in a just give it just give it to us right rhythm. now. Like uh, we'll, we'll play along. Yeah, just do it, dude. Let me see your butt. 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 Will, let me see your butt. Let me see your butt. Let me see <laughs> no, your no, butt. No, let me see no, your stop, butt. Stop, yeah, stop. Josh, let me see let, your butt. Kill it, let me kill see it. your butt. Let me see your butt. Let <laughs> kill us. Bad <laughs> idea. That's what happened. You said, let's do it right here, right now. That's what happens when I take the stage, Jimmy. <laughs> People just start getting up, dancing, taking their clothes off. They get ready for some comedy action. I tell you, you what. You almost committed the atrocity of talking Will out of his pants. <laughs> hey, oh man. my god that was terrifying well, that's uh, what happens i like doing that i like doing that opener 
<laughs> it's it's, fun. Su- it's, it, it's fun. It's, yeah, it gets people <laughs> gets the people going. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Come out to Dugans this Saturday. Go to yeah. Maybe I'll do the clap thing. <laughs> <laughs> You write out your set. It just says clap thing at the top. Is that your name or that bit? I, I just write. Uh, I, I usually, mean, like Joey. I just usually write. Let me see your butt. butt. <laughs> I like. I just imagine Joey going out there with just crowd work written on his hand. It just says crowd work, and he's like, ready to go. You saw my list one time. And you were like, wow, it's a slightly way more organized than <laughs> I thought was. it would be. It was, it you was. I thought it'd be some like, schizophrenic person that's all over the paper, like well, written in like not even words, like images. That's, that's, that's Corey Brewer's book. Is there, it, does he have yeah. a funny book? I feel like every comic probably has a pretty interesting like what their list looks like before they go up there's there are certain comics who are just always way more organized than you expect them to be like you and joey's one of those people like jc morgan is another one that you you meet jc and you don't expect him to like have his shit completely together but he's like has his shit the most together yeah <laughs> if anyone yeah, i he know does. he's super uh, he'll be on that show too yeah he uh, will be yeah he's funny dude i love that it, dude he's a very funny dude and he's like crazy talented like I, he won an emmy or something yeah man yeah for <laughs> yeah i i was over at his house when i saw he has two of them yeah they're heavy <laughs> right <laughs> He's like a he's like a professional lighting technician. The guy's super talented. Anyway, that's going to be a great show. A lot of super funny people on it. I mean, not me, <laughs> or, or me. <laughs> or, right, we t- said t- t- like we t- said, there's a lot of super funny people yeah, on this show. Two out of the four here. <laughs> 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. All right, uh, uh, that's a good time for us to pause for just a second, and we'll come back and we'll do Will Doherty's Slop 40. <laughs> oh, Slop 40. It's Will Doherty's Slop, Slop, Slop 40. That's the person I am. The views and opinions expressed by Will Doherty do not necessarily reflect those of the Jimmy Curve podcast. Will Doherty, ladies and gentlemen, what do you have for us? Well, today we're going to talk about a little song called Fireball by a, an adorable little Hispanic rapper by the name of Pitbull. Oh. Wait, ho- hold on. You've no. already made a mistake by calling him a rapper. He's not a rapper, is he? Yeah, he, I don't think he's a rapper. I, mean, I think he's just like a hype man. He calls himself a rapper. Hype, 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 Is hype. there a better word for the thing he does than rapper? We'll get into this in a little bit. I don't want to interrupt your segment. Okay. Even Otherwise, I will just talk over your segment as I'm doing right now. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> here's all. Here's what I want to say about this song. This is why this song upsets me so much. It's because, like, we can't play it right now for, I assume, legal a variety of legal reasons. I think we can. But We're not making money off of this. I think we should. Okay. Well, then, we'll add that in post. Presumably, you're hearing it right now. <laughs> um... <laughs> Let's but here's the thing. Here's the beauty part. If if you're not, you don't have to be because you can just imagine the song Tequila. You got it. <laughs> right. You're on there 100% if the song Tequila had terrible shitty rapping on top of it. Mm-hmm. All right, that's all it is. Like and then it all just like leads up to the yelling of the word fireball like the word tequila in the song. Now if you don't know who Pitbull is, he's the guy in like Bud Light like Bud Light commercials? Yes. Is it Bud Light Dude's Lime. He's like in every commercial. <laughs> right. He's in up like Bud Light Lime I think is his big one and he's just he's like a short bald guy and there's like a like sort of a vaguely latin vibey dance beat going and then he's just kind of in the middle standing around while other people dance. And he apparently is somehow performing. And he says stuff just like, 305. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Lottie. Just like. Do, do you have lyrics to this song, Will? Uh, if you can call them lyrics, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, What's he say? Okay, here's what. Okay, <laughs> this is what bothers me. Like, this. It's offensive to me. Like. It's because here's the you. first line of the song. I know it, that is as surprising as it should be. Um, he starts out with a pun, and then he does a thing that I've been noticing that drives me crazy in like songs right now, which is he makes a terrible pun, like or joke, and then inserts a laugh into the track, <laughs> <laughs> like the sound of him laughing at his own joke that he recorded. <laughs> this is the Here line. This is the line. That starts the song. I saw, I saw, I came, I conquered. Or should I say I saw, yeah, 
Or should I say, I saw, I conquered, I came. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, here's what God. here's what I want to know. Can we say came? Like, can we use came as the past tense of come on the radio? Because they do. I don't know how that's regulated. You can say skeet. <laughs> I think can you I say can. come on the radio? You can because it doesn't have a U in it. <laughs> oh, so if they changed, like, did somebody check the, like, booklet on the come? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> oh, that would come meant someone. Oh, come here. Not that it. meant someone would have had to buy a physical CD, which what are the odds of that happening well, yeah. in this day and age, mm-hmm. so that they could check the booklet and see what the lyric says. Well, the, the, the argument is it's implied. It's it not is. descriptive enough to not be able to say it on the radio. Guys, it's art. <laughs> art <laughs> art has never stopped this fascist <laughs> regime from shutting down a true artist like Pitbull. Let's be no, honest. I'm all I'm all for art and awesome stuff, but Pitbull sucks. Pitbull's <laughs> pretty. He's a pretty bad <laughs> singer. <laughs> but but here's here, here, here's the question. What is he bad at? Because as far as I can tell, he doesn't do anything. He's I can yeah, I, can, I should say he's bad because he's he is doing it well. He is playing the game well and playing the card and making money. This he's, is what Pitbull is to me. This is Pitbull is what you would do if you had no talent, but somehow were able to trick everyone into thinking you were famous. That's what Pit, <laughs> that's yeah. what Pitbull is to me. Is. See, I wanted to test that. Like he's like this the other idea. two guys. He's like the other two guys than Will I Am in the. Black Eyed Peas. Like, there's, there's, there's two other guys who are just other pit bull. They don't do anything. Sorry, Will. I go ahead. Well, no. Like, here's the thing. I I I heard this song on the radio all the time when I'm driving, and I wanted to go like see the video to see what this would look like as a music video. Right. And that almost made it endearing because he's <laughs> not cool at all. <laughs> I watched the video for yeah. Pitbull. Yeah, he's just like Was a, he a dopey. Suit? Bald dude who's like dancing badly, like he—he's yeah, he's like the Mexican side. He's a Mexican. He looks like a dorky white guy dancing. Yeah, and like that made it more endearing. I wanted to. I after I watched the video to this song, I was like, "Oh, I want to like him." Like you're sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what was his first song was. I like, like I forgot where he came from. It, 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 his yeah, the his dark fr- abyss. Well, I think he's just a. I think he's just a guy who just made beats in his basement, and somehow one of them got picked up. Like he just makes dance beats. I think. I, or is he even a producer? Like, or does he have another guy who does that? He's, I don't know. He's a dog. <laughs> yeah, he's, Little we know. All right. Yeah, you can train him to fight. He's also a Jet Li movie. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> but you know, I I just he factors into that category of guys who are super famous and women who are super famous in music, and I can't figure out what they do they don't seem to do it like what does kesha do like she doesn't really sing she doesn't rap she, she kind of talks she parties and throws glitter boom she That's apparently the- writes all of her own songs which See, i'm not necessarily saying is a point in her favor no but like andrew wk also just parties but he does it awesome andrew w- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I work at vega and he, he came there and he played a show there and it was pretty crazy <laughs> that was pretty fun so yeah, uh, it's pretty. I don't know. I this music's just like I don't know. This music, it's what it is. It's what it. Is. Yeah, there's. It's. I Andrew W K doesn't try to be half, anything yeah, half more. Half the time than, I thought it was satire, and then I was like, I don't think this is satire. <laughs> 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 I think he firmly believes all these things. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I would say that Fireball also fits into that category of music like Anaconda, which you talked about on the last edition, which is just another song with almost nothing added to it. Like, Anaconda is just Baby Got Back. Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing that wasn't originally Baby Got Back in that song. <laughs> like, he found, he found a kick drum sound effect and just hit it over tequila. Just boom, 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 <laughs> boom. Like, over tequila, that's all it is, so... I looked over uh, Pitbull's entire Wikipedia page. Nice. And there is only one interesting thing about him. <coughs> and that's actually more about the situation in August 2011. Lizzie Lohan sued Pitbull <laughs> in response to nice. a song's lyrics referencing her name. Quote, I've got, I've got, it, on, I've got it locked up. Like Lindsay Lohan, end quote. <laughs> and She's now, damning. And now that I just read that, 
that's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one time he just, just locked her in his basement. <laughs> this sucks. It just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got one more song for us, Will? I do. Uh, this is a song by someone uh, I know you're familiar with, uh, an artist by the name of Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Which, uh, someone whose music you have uh, succinctly described as not food! Right, I've described it as like a chew toy for a dog. Like <laughs> It's delicious, but there's no nourishment there. It, <laughs> the dog doesn't know that it's not food, and it keeps trying to eat it. Well, the song that I'm I'm going to talk about today is probably like the clearest example of that phenomena. It's a little ditty called "This Is How We Do," mm. uh, and the reason I I chose this song for that reason, like it's aside from the fact that it's currently on the radio, is the fact that it has the most words with no meaning out of virtually any song I've ever heard. Okay, this is the entire chorus. Of this is how we do. This is how we do. Yeah, chillin' laid back, straight stuntin'. Yeah, we do it like that. This is how we do. Do 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 do. <laughs> this is how we do. Yeah, that she didn't say anything. There though. were no. There was no meaning in any of those <laughs> words. Sounds like she's just relaxing. <laughs> 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 That's all that song is. It's just her kicking him back. <laughs> I mean, Joey it sounds finds it like her songwriter was relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Is yeah. that pay for this? Read that, read that one more time just so we can let it sink in. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I've, I'm gonna. It's going into the rhythm this time. <laughs> all right. This is how we do, yeah. Chillin' laid back, straight stuntin', yeah. We do it like that. This is how we do. Hey. Do, f- do, do, do. Okay, I feel kind of... This is how we do it. <laughs> oh, I thought Katy Perry was in here right now. <laughs> I feel like I'd like to get out and do some straight stunting. <laughs> I'll be honest, that sounds kind of awesome. Stunting. <laughs> stunting. Like Jackie Chan stunting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck your that means. Your own stunting. Sounds awesome. It, it, you, it, do, you do your own stunting or do you have a stunting I, double? I, I, here's what I feel like straight stunting is. Whatever it is I normally do at home on my couch, it's the opposite of that. (laughs) So, yeah, it'd be good for me. I actually looked up Katy Perry's Wikipedia page for anything interesting, and it just said boobs. (laughs) (laughs) Those those are interesting. Boobs boobs are interesting. Well, I mean, yeah. I bet she's... Two for two. I don't know. I don't know anything about her. (laughs) Okay. So this this v- horrible, vapid song that has nothing to say at the end finally gets to some real lyrical content during a little spoken word breakdown towards the end. Because, like, the, the studio recording of this song is like a faux live recording. They pretend like there's an audience there. Right. Uh... And this is what they this is what she says, like speaking as if to the audience. This one goes out to the ladies at breakfast in last night's dress. Uh huh. Mm. I see you. This is more of that women's empowerment thing that we've talked right. about before. Right. <laughs> Yo, this goes to all this goes out to all you kids that still have your cars at the club valet and it's Tuesday. <laughs> That's that's her pretend Hispanic accent, by the way. Yeah. It sounded like she was a drag queen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what I got out of that. I've seen well, I've had many a drag queen sound that same exact way to me. Katy Perry is one of those people who fits into that category that I've heard psychologists talk about female female impersonators. Like they're a woman who is doing her best impression of a woman. Like Deep. she's Making herself super, like way over the top, female-ish <laughs> looking, like Nicki Minaj, like Nicki Minaj, and then they ended up just looking cartoonish. Yeah, they do look cartoonish. Anyways, finish finish off this dope poetry. Okay. Uh huh. Yo, shout out to all you kids buying bottle service with your rent money. I'm really white. <laughs> 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 Bottle service with your rent money. First of all, like if that's who this song is meant to be appealing to, that's the smallest demographic in the world. <laughs> that's people who have like 
are so rich that they're out clubbing, buying whatever bottle services, which I don't know because I live in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sounds like trust fund kids going yeah. crazy. That's who our audience is, just rich. But like, yeah, rich teens. They're not spending right. their rent money on bottle service because if they did, after one month, they would be homeless people. <laughs> right. Well, this is another one of those fictional things where she's appealing to 15-year-old girls, telling them about the people spending their rent money on bottle service who don't really exist, but to the 15- and 16-year-old girls that she's selling albums to, like that's what she's trying to right. tell the story about. That's like, if you want to spend your money responsibly... And contribute to society. Put your hands up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that in a song. I want to be like, this one goes out to all you teleporting mutants out there. <laughs> <laughs> At least that would be something to aspire to, Jimmy. This beat goes out to all my laser beam eye motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's one more. We got one more that Katy Perry sending it out to. Drop that shit. This goes out to all you people going to bed with a 10 and waking up with a 2. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, perception. <laughs> oh. Darkness. Oh, Darkness yeah. and alcohol, perhaps clouded judgment. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like the type of demographic who listen to that music. <laughs> 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 if my wife was the demographic, it'd be, this is going off to, to all you ladies out there who go to bed with a two and wake up with a two. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're a two. <laughs> Maybe if you hadn't have bought bottle service with your rent money, you wouldn't have chlamydia. <laughs> Oh, Zing. Katy Perry, you dumb, dumb person. <laughs> I wonder if she's smart. I wonder. We were talking about Kesha before. Didn't she graduate from like some super prestigious college or like attend one for a while? Kesha went to Harvard, right? Yeah, that's why. Is that I, true? I, yeah, I don't know. I think so. Someone with a faster phone. I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the one who's been Wikipedia and Pitbull. <laughs> Josh, I, listen. I, I, Josh, know, Josh. I know what I need to know about Kesha. <laughs> Josh, will you used no, to be a cop. Educated. Where did Kesha go to college? <laughs> <laughs> she's an educated woman. <laughs> Makes no sense. Why is she so dumb then? <laughs> she sucks. No, she just knows what attracts people. It's smart. Mm. It's all advertising, and it's sick and wrong. How do you guys react when you find out that like a celebrity went to like Harvard or something? Like, who's the act? Like Natalie Portman, right? She went to like. Oh, she's she's awesome. She gave a couple of speeches at like some Congress for like equality and yeah, yeah. No, she, she is like she went to didn't she? She went to like Harvard. Or it was some mm-hmm. some Ivy League school, right? I think she went to Brown, maybe. I don't know, but she graduated from somewhere, some Ivy League school. In answer to your question, I react by seething and screaming, Attractive people aren't supposed to be smart! (laughs) (laughs) My thing is, like, she doesn't need to go to Harvard, right? And so she's taking up a space of somebody who could actually, like, use that degree. You know what I mean? I like James Woods. Or James Wood? James Woods. Woods. He he has the highest intelligent, uh, uh, what are they, quotient? IQ? Uh, Yes. (laughs) <laughs> IQ. He has the highest IQ in Hollywood, <laughs> and he yeah. he and he. I think he dropped out of. I don't even think he went to college. Yeah, but that's not like that's not an admirable trait. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I could see like he, he didn't need to. Yeah, right. he's taking up the space of somebody who is actually going to use that. Well, you don't. Robin you Williams. Don't, he like left Juilliard. Well, you don't go to college though just to get a job in the field that you're studying. You you learn you pick up a bunch of shit in co- like. Especially at a place like Harvard, like you, you go there to. I'm Meet sure some you. People. Not get only that, but, not only that, but but learn how to get things done. Like you learn how to network. You learn how, and also just how to how to work hard. You can't graduate from Harvard, even if you're super smart, without also getting better at things like focusing, tuning out distractions, working hard. Uh, you know. You you learn how to learn. I think college is really valuable. I'm about for to all graduate. This. I'm distracted as shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, I guess I think mm. um, I think a large majority of the reason she went to Harvard is so she could tell people she went to Harvard. Also, also, I Ellen, think she got uh, like a scholarship. You said that as if that was a flaw on her part. I'm pretty sure that's the reason everyone goes to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> also, Ellen Muth from Dead Like Me went to like Harvard. I think. 
Yeah. I don't know Dead Like Me is a great show. Check it out. It was super awesome. I don't know. It was 12 years Sometimes ago. Sometimes actors are smart. Yeah. That's a five year old TV show. Stun plug. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, we, you, for listeners at home, you re- the real joy of that one was Will's dancing, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> spastic hand movement. I don't know, jiggling, that, jiggling. F- final thoughts on Katy Perry, Joey. Um, she's pretty and makes certain music that only a certain demographic find acceptable. Joshua, yes, please. Will. Does that mean Russell Brand is a man pretending to be a man? <laughs> <laughs> and that's been... It's Will Doherty. Slop, 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 Doherty. Oh, I cut it off. That's the person I am! <laughs> Get in there and yell that shit. Slop. <laughs> hey, uh, midterm were elections. Midterm were elections. I That was <laughs> not a sentence. Today, uh, midterm elections were held. Uh, did I say that right? There was voting. Did, did you vote, Joey? I did not. Did you vote, make Will? It in there. Nope. I didn't. <laughs> I guess none of us voted. Josh, did you? Vote? I voted. <laughs> one one <laughs> out of four. Mm-hmm. We yes, almost, I did. Good almost, job. almost a clean sweep for the Jimmy curve, but nope, Joshua, you had to go ruin it. It was weird because I, I went in and there's nobody there voting. Yeah, describe it to us. What's I, like? I went in a bunch of elderly people at these long tables to sign you in, and then there was just nobody voting. I was like the only one there, and uh, I voted. And then walked out, and a guy was like, hey, did you just vote? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, uh, well, I'm from the Omaha World Herald. Can I? Do you have a minute? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I guess. He's like, he asked me for my, my name, my age. Did you plug the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he asked me for my, my name, my age, my political affiliation. And then he's just like, is there a lot of people in there? I'm like, no, there's no one in there. He goes, Okay, cool. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, my wife Mary what? said something funny. My wife Mary went to vote today. She said something funny. She said she didn't, you know, she went in there and she didn't know like any of the candidates or any of what the, any of the issues were. So she went in there with just her phone and just for each topic like googled both candidates to see what <laughs> what the internet said about them and then made her choices. No. But she was like filling in little circles on a paper and she said it, it, she had like a flashback to taking tests and it felt like she was <laughs> cheating. <laughs> it felt like somehow she came out of there and she was like, God, I feel like I rigged the election somehow because I was mm-hmm. cheating on a test. But it's not a test. Like you should do that. But she said, she said when she was there, it took her way longer than anyone else to vote. <laughs> oh. She went in there with the internet and looked everything up. That's what I would have done if I went there. So that made her the most informed person voting that day. (laughs) Right. Well, what she said, uh, and she posted this on Facebook, was, I voted today, so I feel okay complaining about stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Which is as good a reason as any. That's true, yeah. Now, I never complain about politics. I I don't have a say. (laughs) I didn't vote. (laughs) I feel the same way. I don't vote. And I never complain about anything. Like yeah. I just, you're never gonna hear me be like, "This politician sucks." Well, See, um, I don't vote, and I do complain. <laughs> We're all different. It's a beautiful <laughs> spectrum. <laughs> See, now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. <laughs> it's rubbing off. Well, uh, Will will be eating more Taco Bell next year because they are raising the minimum wage. They are good. They are. That's, That's true. Good. I was literally informed yesterday that if I would have gone to vote today. I could have gone in to vote to give myself a pay raise, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else went through? That's that, that, about, was, like, that was the only initiative on there. Other than that, it was just candidates and judges. Cool. So, which I you mean, have results? It's, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of strange because Republicans won across the board. That's Nebraska, and and de- Democrats were the ones that endorsed the hike in minimum wage, and they they lost. And it was Republicans that won that didn't support it. So Nebraska is kind of a weird place, I yeah, guess. Yeah, dude, Nebraska kind of sucks sometimes politically. Well, I mean, I just it's kind of the opposite. The 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 you know the very politically motivated or just like politically like people are at odds on that initiative. That it was the Republicans that won this won all the election uh, aspect of it, and then 
basically the Democratic initiative is the one that won. So now explain that. Now, Joshua, you're a card carrying libertarian, which means I assume you voted for some sort of write in lizard person regime. They're, they <laughs> no, I don't and, know. <laughs> no, and fuck you. He was <laughs> first his of name all, was on the ballot. First of he all, got, he Jimmy. Got, he Libertarians got, are the ones who are against the lizards. Oh, okay. All right. Who was it? <laughs> Listen, fuck you. He got 3%. <laughs> all right? <laughs> who was it? Was there a libertarian candidate? <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Uh, let's see. Which In which race? <laughs> uh, the white. 100 white. meter dash. Governor? White. Mark Ellsworth? Caucasian. He got almost 4%. Okay. And Pete Ricketts is going to win that race. I don't know how do you we, Do we like him? Is he like four? They both suck. Isn't rickets a disease? Yeah. Isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like a disease when you have like a potassium deficiency or something. The rickets? And you get the rickets? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joey, you I said, got the Pete you, rickets. You said that like an old man. Like, bro, he's got the rickets. <laughs> like, do you watch the Seinfeld? I like when you put a the in front of it. Anyways, uh, so libertarianism. Uh, yeah. It's where we all like found a colony on the moon, or I don't know. No, it just means like <laughs> I think more people are libertarian than they want to accept, or they don't know enough about it to realize that they are probably more libertarian than any other ideology, because it's based on the concept you kind of want to be left alone. And I feel like right. most people are like that. I like that. Yeah, I, I know that it makes Ryan Dowd furious. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it does. You know, in part of, in part I'm of, really mad. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to I was talking to Ryan about politics the other day, and he was like, "If you don't vote, you don't complain. You can't complain." And I was like, "I don't vote, and I never complain." And he went, oh, "Well, okay." <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a big push uh, to encourage people to vote, uh, to try and get as many people to vote as possible. Um, especially certain election years, because they need those votes and they rely on uninformed or and or dumb people to vote, mm -hmm. so they can get whatever they want through. Mm -hmm. um, I will not be a part of the agenda. Yeah, I've I've always discouraged. Boom! I've always dis Joey Zimmerman. <laughs> <always> mic drop. <laughs> Sorry. Except it's on a mic stand, so I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna tip this mic over, <laughs> and I keep waving at you to not touch it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't think you. I don't think. You should encourage people to vote just yeah, for the sake of voting. Know. Yeah, like I didn't vote because I'm like unknowledgeable on like what most of the people stand for. And it's like, I don't know what I'd be doing in there. Yeah, my vote would not be a good thing for anything. It would yeah. just be, I would just be <laughs> randomly checking boxes. That's like the same I do on tests. It's like, let's see, <laughs> <laughs> see how this ends and up. And you're graduating. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, it's not random. There's a rule that when you're voting, if you don't know who to vote for, you always pick C. Yeah, oh, that's of course, right. that's right. Yeah, that's forgot about. Democrat and then, and then there, <laughs> I, I, there is a thing. Wait, uh, that would be the libertarian candidate. <laughs> Four percent. <laughs> that there's a thing too. Basically, you know, just because something passed or some, you know, the idea that more laws are good, I think, is bad. And libertarians don't like that in general. And I, I think, like, uh, there's a thing called the tyranny of majority. Um, mm. So if enough people vote for something that isn't necessarily good or violates people's rights, you know, that can be voted on, and it doesn't matter if it's a bad thing or not. So, I mean, voting is what it is. I don't know if it's good or bad sometimes. So everybody don't It would, it would be good <laughs> if the right people won. If there was a well, if there was an initiative on the ballot to bring back Futurama, I'd check that box. But other <laughs> other than that, I just don't really care. I guess. <laughs> well, well, when the Kickstarter finally comes, vote with your dollars, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, I but, just feel like a, I feel like a, a leper sometimes being a libertarian because most people are either Democrat or re Republican or they don't give a fuck. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. there, there you're right. There are three right choices and libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I was in high school and I was like 18 and just like as our like civics class activity, we all like hustled our ass down to the courthouse to register to vote. I did one that I've, I I did something that I feel like is even more like 
like a source of mockery than registering libertarian, which was registering nonpartisan. <laughs> <laughs> are you, but you are registered to vote. I mean, I was when I was in high school. It, I have yeah. no idea if that's still the case. It, I assume no. not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Every no, time no, you no. move, you have to re-register. I've yeah, never registered to vote. I don't vote. think I've registered. I've never gotten a sticker, so. I No, I, I, what I like is that if you don't <laughs> register to vote, you can't be called a jury duty. Right? Isn't that, aren't those tied uh, together? True? No, I don't think that is true. That False. Been, they've been going at this a lot. I was going to say, I want Jerry duty. I've been wanna... fucking, I've been really carrying that flag falsely, I guess, for a long time. <laughs> it is one of the ways they pick uh, right. jury members, but no, you can still be called a jury duty. Um, really, if you want to get out of jury duty, commit a felony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Done and done. That's like the only, or be a cop. <laughs> you know? oh, right. Hold on. Uh, there's a very important distinction to be made here. Be convicted of a felony. Mm. Yes. Very smart, Will. Very good call. Get or caught. really, if you want to get out of jury, jury duty, I, I read an article that all you have to do is like when you're being interviewed in front of the court to become a member or not. Um, just say jury nullification, and they essentially have to start the whole case over again. I think they have to get different inter- <laughs> like it just like throws a wrench in everything, and they don't rattle the cage a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do, man. <laughs> People like freak out if you say that in court. Jury, jury nullification. So that's awesome. All right, well, uh, that pretty much wraps up the Jimmy Curves election coverage. Ex- that was exciting. Check, <laughs> check that box. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let me leave you guys with just this one more thought, and then we'll wrap up the show. I've recently realized that I'm obsessed with forms of miniature motorized transportation. Smart cars, segways. I love them, and I really want one of them. <laughs> what do yeah. you drive, Jimmy? No, it's a normal car, like a chump. No, um, what do you drive? What's your car? Oh, a, tr- a giant pickup truck. Big old fucking pickup <laughs> truck. It's huge. <laughs> I got really excited for a second because I thought we were doing a segment about Hot Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, thank you guys for listening so much. <laughs> Go out and buy some Hot Wheels. This is a Hot Wheels ad, right? Uh, we'd like to thank our guest, Joey Zimmerman. Yay. Yay. I, had, I had a fun time. I learned a lot. I hope my experiences have shed new light on... Matters that were unfamiliar before. We're expecting the Joey Zimmerman bump in our download count. Uh, I do that bump. That <laughs> bump, dude. You'll get like ten or twenty, maybe. There'll all be some Whoa. underage girls. So. Yeah, that's our that's our <laughs> primary demographic. So good. No, I'm just playing. Uh, who will be? Shit just got weird. And with that, for Joshua Vossler, Namaste, and Will Doherty, Hail Baphomet. <laughs> I've been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you for listening. Good night. Mm-hmm.